Come on, LifeBridge, how you doing this morning? Yeah. Amen, amen. Anybody ready for the word? Yeah. Come on, anybody ready for the word? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let's jump right in if you're okay with that. Uh, we're going to jump right in. I have a standalone message today that first service received real well. Let's see how you do. And I'm so excited about preaching the word of God. How many know we love the word of God around here? And um, I, I was going to start a new series, finish the old series, but the Lord uh, gripped me with something and I couldn't get away from it. And so we're going to be in uh, John chapter 18. Before you stand for the reading of God's word, we're going to be in John chapter 18, verse 33 through 38. And just to give you the backdrop of the story, if you don't know who Jesus is, um, Jesus is man filled with fully God, fully God and fully man. I don't know. There, there's this uh, premise going around in our culture right now. Uh, I've seen it on Instagram and I've seen it on Facebook and there's conversations that are being had um, that uh, if you have faith in God, you get to heaven. And I'm just telling you right now, if your God's name is not Jesus, you are not making it into heaven. And there is only one way by man that, that, that man should be saved. And that man's name is Jesus. And there is only one way. There's one, there's one truth and there's one life. And if, I don't know what faith you have, but if it is not in a God named Jesus, then you do not have a saving faith. There is only one name that can save, that can redeem, that can restore. There is only one God and every other God is an idol who cannot see, who cannot hear. But our God is alive. He's powerful. And his name is Jesus. I just want to put it on display really quickly you can zoom in on my face and let the culture cancel cancel culture cancel me but if your god's name is not jesus there is only one way by man shall be saved and his name is jesus and the blood can save redeem restore anybody anywhere anytime but you cannot put your faith in god you have to put your faith in jesus god has a name and that name has been exalted above any other name and that name is Jesus. And there is a culture going around right now in conversations that, that you do not have to believe in Jesus just to believe in God. Let me just tell you, there is only one God. And his name is Jesus. And this man became, God became man. Jesus lived 33 years, sinless, perfect, righteous, holy. The Bible says that in him was no darkness. There was no darkness that God was. He is light. And in him was no darkness. It means he was trustworthy. It means he was found holy. He was righteous. There was no sin in him. No deception. That he had. He did not have a single thought of sin in his brain. And he gave, he gave his life, laid down his life. He preached the message as preached the message that the kingdom of God was at hand and he went about healing good healing all who were sick and oppressed by the devil and he laid hands on the sick and saw them recover and he said the kingdom of God is at hand and all of a sudden he said I'm gonna die this death he goes before Pilate he goes before the other kings they can't find any fault within him but then they said what do you want to do with him they say crucify him and all of a sudden just to give you the backdrop we see this moment in our text today Jesus is about to be crucified for the sins of, of, of humanity and pay the price for sin, death, hell, and the grave for you and I to be restored back unto God. And him and Pilate have this moment together. And for that, we stand for the reading of God's word. If we can, catch up. If you're physically able to stand, this is the last time that I'm, I ask you to stand. If you stand after this, it's because it's so good. You just can't help yourself. And look at me really quickly. I have to preface this. I love you. Listen to me. I love you. The Bible says, So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered said, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting. That I might not be delivered over to the Jews. Listen to me really quickly. I'm going to read this again. Jesus answered. Pay attention. 
Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would be fighting. That I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from this world. Then Pilate said to him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate says something that the world is saying right now. What is, what is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. Listen to me. I love you. The title of my message today, you have to tell your favorite neighbor, make church great again. <laughs> Not make America great again, but make church great again. High five somebody, find your seat. Make church great again. Make church great again. Make church great again. It's no secret if you've been a part of this church for a while, you know one of my greatest fears in life is to fly. I think planes, I think planes are demonic instruments, and I think when you fly, you are being disobedient. The Bible says to be rooted and grounded in faith. That I believe that if we were meant to fly, we would have had wings, and one day maybe, but I'm gonna alt, I'm gonna out on mine and be like, you can keep mine. I don't wanna fly. I'd like to walk, please. That's why the streets are made of gold, so we can walk on them. You can keep my wings. And if they tell you at your, my funeral that I gained my wings, let them know the devil is a lie, that he is walking the streets of heaven, not flying and meeting me up in the sky somewhere. But see, when, when people hear that I'm afraid to fly, they say really dumb things. <laughs> really dumb things, like sleep on the plane. You're psychotic. You need help? Anyone who sleeps on a plane makes me nervous. <laughs> I, and then they say things like this you're more likely to get in a car accident than a plane crash or they say it like this you're more likely to get bit by a shark than crash in a plane false because I'm not in the ocean <laughs> we'll scratch that one off as a lie sharks like white meat and these legs is white <laughs> All my friends are black. I'm just like the one that everybody's going to code for. The sharks like the white meat. And so I just stay out of the ocean. I'm on the beach. And then they say things like this. They say, it's, you're more likely to get in a car accident than an airplane. Yes, that's true because 16-year-olds aren't flying planes, first of all. And then secondly, there are more cars on the road than there are planes. Secondly, I get in a car every single day of my life. I get in a plane only when I have to. So yes, that strategy is true. Did you know I did some research. Did you know that Texas is the leading state for fatal car accidents? Did you know? You know who's number two? California. We outdid them on how many of us die on the road. Did you know that 333 million car accidents happen in a year? 333,600,000 car accidents happen in a year. Did you know that, that out of those, 23% of car accidents, y'all are like, what is this, Google? 23% of car accidents are because the driver was using their phone. 23%. Of fatal car accidents happened because the individual driving did not get out of the driver's seat. They were not intoxicated. They were not, they were not out of their minds. They did not have a blowout. They did not have something wrong with their car. The alignment wasn't off. They were actually ending 23% of life ending car accidents are because the driver was distracted. A text message ended 23% of the people's lives. 
or because the individual is scrolling Facebook. Scrolling Instagram, videoing TikToks, 23% of them. It wasn't because the driver was in, like intoxicated. He didn't make a dumb move. He wasn't stupid. Some say they weren't, they weren't idiotic. They were distracted. And hear me for a second, friend. If the enemy cannot derail you, his target is to simply distract you. If he cannot get you out of the driver's seat in totality, cannot pull you from being in control, all he has to do is get you distracted to derail your life, to de 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 just derail, totally destroy your life is because none other reason than not because you made a terrible mistake, not because you are stupid, not because the spirit of stupid came over you, but many of us are in the church today, and let me tell you something, the enemy is trying to distract the church. Hear me for a second, friend. I need you to understand there is a division that is coming in the church because we are simply distracted. I want to tell you today that your life might actually end in a fatal accident, not even physically, but spiritually, because the enemy has come in and planted seeds to distract the body of Christ. And let me tell you, friend, today and now in this season, it is not time to lose your head. It is not time to lose your mind. It is not time to get distracted. It's not time to go to and fro about your ways. It is not time to look to the left. It is not time to look to the right. It is time for the church to set its face like flint on the assignment that God has for the church, which is to destroy the gates of hell. And when we look inside of the church, hear me for just a second, we cannot afford in this season, specifically in 2024, as we know we approach some of the most unprecedented times that our nation sees, we cannot afford to get distracted. And I'm seeing distractions throughout the church that you're either going to agree with or disagree with, and that's okay. But I want to talk to you today. I had three. I'm only going to get to two. I want to talk to you today about two distractions that we cannot allow in the body of Christ. Y'all okay? You are right now. There are two distractions that we cannot allow into the body of Christ, the church of the living God, and that is the distraction of politics. Yeah. <laughs> I heard, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me for a second. And this is where I don't care if you like me or not. It's all so evident right now that I don't care because of what I'm about to say. It is sad to see Christians more patriotic than they are kingdom-minded. Yeah. Hear me. Jesus isn't American. And he is not coming back to the sound of the national anthem with red, white, and blue in the background. Hear me, friend. The white picture of Jesus that you had in your living room is false. The Jesus that we know, he's a Middle Eastern, dark-skinned Jew whose native language isn't even English, and he's coming back, blood-covered, adorned for his bride, the church, and he will put every government under his feet and embarrass anything that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Newsflash, Christ didn't die for America, and he's not coming back for America. Listen to me, you can be MAGA all you want to be. You can be pa patriotic as you please. Paint yourself red, white, and blue if you so desire. But make no mistake, I'm not a donkey and I'm not an elephant. And there's no real hope for humanity in either party. A donkey won't save us. An elephant can't redeem us. Ditch the donkey, throw away the elephant, and embrace the lamb. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. 
His robe, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. His robe is not an American flag, and the tattoo on his leg does not say president of presidents. He's coming back on a white horse with a company of angels that can't be numbered, with a robe dipped in blood, and on his thigh says king of kings and lord of lords. You didn't vote him in, and you most certainly can't vote him out. Presidents, governors, princes, and kings will bow at his name and kingdoms of this world shall soon become the kingdoms of our God. Pastor, pastor, calm down. Listen to me. Save your breath. Greater have tried to calm me down. The devil has messed with the wrong guy and he will regret ever messing with me. There's a righteous fight that's gripped me and won't leave me alone. And I'm tired of watching the enemy overplay his hand in the people of God and have his way inside the body of Christ. I'm not an American before I'm a kingdom citizen. And I might be in this world, but make no mistake, I'm not of this world. And I came from another world and I'm not living for this world. I came to set the record straight. I came to set the record straight. My world didn't rest on government before, and my peace doesn't rest on who sits in office. My world is in the hands of him who came with the government resting on his shoulders. And his name is Adonai El Shaddai. He is the Prince of Peace, the Rock of Ages, and the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. He's everlasting to everlasting, and when you get to the bottom, you find he is the Rock of the Cornerstone of the Ages. When will the real church stand up I came to tell somebody today if you want revival to strike our nation we have to lay down our idol called government Healing isn't found in the American flag and never will be. I don't need an American flag, the nation, the, the national anthem, or Trump in the office. Democrats can't fix it. Republicans can't fix it. Government can't fix it. Pastor, be careful. Tread lightly. You don't want to upset the big donors. Buckle up because I can't be bought, bribed, or manipulated. And I'm here to speak the truth. And I've, I've already lost them already anyway. So I might as well go ahead and let you know the truth of the living God is not founded on government. We cannot put our trust in politics and political parties. We don't need a Republican. We don't need a Democrat. We don't need a political party. We need a revival in the body of Christ. America doesn't need a Republican. America needs a revival. And we don't need another four-year term. We need the third grade awakening. And I wish I had somebody that would say the heck with government, the heck with the office. You can vote in who you want to. I know that I serve a king who is above every other king. Make America great again. When was America great? I'll offend you. It's okay. And I, I, I honor the people that have fought for our country. And I honor, the, I honor those in government. And I, listen, I honor every president that have ever been in office because I don't honor the person. I honor the position. And I don't care. None of them have done a great job, and they're all human. Why would I put my trust in somebody who is human? I am not telling you that the church should not pay attention to government. Hear me for just a second. I am not telling you that we should not play a role. But the government... The church doesn't follow the government. The government should follow the church. And there cannot be a place in the body of Christ where we allow who we vote for to come in between our commitment to the gospel message of Jesus Christ. I didn't lay my life down. I didn't lay my life down to build a life-giving church. I didn't lay my life down to draw a crowd. I didn't lay my life down so that we could have a city 
so that we could have a church in the city that knows that they're a good church to go to and that their worship is good and the message is good. I laid my life down to be baptized in the spirit of God and to be dangerous for evil. And I want to be a place that you might not like the way that we worship, but when you get cancer, you call us. We don't like, you might not like the preferences. You might not like our opinions and we not, we might not believe in anything that you believe in, but when you're in trouble, you know who to call. I didn't lay my life down to have a church. I laid my life down to destroy the gates of hell and that when my feet hit the floor that when people encounter me with depression they leave with joy when people encounter me in suicide they leave with life and life more abundantly I didn't come to play games I didn't come to make live check to check I didn't come to stand before people who make you an option that demand you to make d- d- demand you to make them a priority I didn't come to tickle the ears of the religious I came to destroy the gates of hell and greater works that we should do that, it, that that he did and I want to be baptized sanctified, redeemed I want all my ambitions to be thrown out the window I don't want my own plans I don't want my own strategies I don't want my own kingdom I want the kingdom of God and nothing else yeah. Yeah. where's the remnant where are those who have been redeemed, restored, and delivered and haven't sold out to making a better life here. If you pay really close attention, hear me for just a second. I'm not telling you we shouldn't care about politics. I am telling you I'm annoyed with Christians who care more about the interest rate than they do the death rate. I I, I don't want to be a part of a Christian society that cares more about mortgage payments and what the price of lettuce is. I want Christians who are enamored with the suicide in their city, the suicide rate in their city going lower. I'm talking about making sure marriages don't end in divorce. I'm talking about I'm talking about a kingdom of God that says I'm not from this world and I'm not of this world. And when I get through with this world, I'm not going to convince you to vote for somebody for a four-year term who's not going to make much of a difference anyway. I don't care about that. I don't care about this. I don't care about render to send render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but render to God what belongs to God. And there has to be a space and a place where you stop worrying about the sad part is most of your friends know who you're voting for and they don't know where you're spending eternity. I don't care if you want to be an evangelist for Trump or evangelist for Biden. If you like Biden, vote for Biden. If you like Trump, vote for Trump. But let every man be a liar and let God be true. And there is a moment where we have to understand that our our word says, hear me for a second because you say, Pastor Brian, that's real good and it's real churchy. But listen to me. Romans chapter 13 verse 1 says, all authority is God ordained. Don't get mad at me, friend. I didn't write it. I just found it. Y'all are more tense than the first service. I thought first service was going to stone me. First service walked the dog, kicked the cat, and and told me, preach, white boy. Walk the dog, bishop. They kicked the can all throughout the service. And I'm telling you right now, I'm just, I I, want to be very clear on what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we don't involve ourselves in politics. I'm saying don't allow the things of this world to get inside of kingdom mindsets. And don't let it destroy kingdom relationships. What I'm telling you is this. If you want to post all day long who you're voting for, that there is no shade. There is no condemnation. I, I, I agree with you. I believe that we shouldn't be involved in politics. I believe that our opinion matters, but I don't believe that you should allow it to burn bridges that the Holy Spirit now has to heal before you can reach somebody. 
Not in the body of Christ. Not in the body of Christ. Division should not be in our midst. And I don't care who you vote for. And listen, you say, Pastor, don't get political. I'm not getting political. I'm telling you not to let politics in between you and the believer that loves you and you're both spending eternity somewhere. Don't burn the bridge and then get let it be in heaven where it's awkward, where God has to separate you like two little babies. <laughs> And com- oh, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm just telling you right now. It is embarrassing. To the nature and the character of God. For people in our nation right now. Comparing the trial of Trump. To the trial of Jesus. Pastor, don't get political. I'm just telling you. They found no fault in Jesus. And let me just tell you, whether you love Trump or not, that man is all faulty, fickle, and fleeting. And if you share the picture with the world on Trump's back, fall on your knees and repent because the world is not on the back of a president. The world is in his hands and it is in the hands of the creator. And I don't want my world on the back of any president, black, white, yellow, or Asian. I don't care, Democrat or Republican. My world is not on the back of any president, government, or prince or age. My, my world is in the hands of the one that created it. And we have to get over ourselves. Don't allow, hear me for a second. I told you I love you. Don't allow, let me encourage you. Don't allow politics in your kingdom. You can have them all you want to. Vote for who you want to. I will never tell you who to vote for. Some of you are like, well, you should tell them who to vote for. (laughs) My God. We're just not the same, friend. We're not the same. And that's okay. I love you anyway. I'm not holding it against you. Don't hold my opinion against me. And if you if you ran into the sanctuary, if you ran into the sanctuary to worship God while in your car on Facebook bashing someone who doesn't believe in what you believe, you need to hit the altar, repent for the malice in your heart, and ask God to redeem and restore your life. Because there is not room in the body of Christ for division. Not, I feel the spirit of Megan coming on me, not up in here. I don't care how passionate you are. What I want you to be passionate about is not who you're voting for. I want, to be, I want you to be passionate about saving the saving mercy and grace of God. I am so, I'm so frustrated with Christians right now that are so passionate about somebody who's going to get in the office and they're not passionate about the saving grace and blood of Jesus. I promise you right now, if you prayed for your pastor as much as you prayed for President Trump, he would go to a whole nother level. If you prayed for your pastor and your leaders and your church as much as you prayed for the government and the voting and all of the stuff, I promise you this thing would go to the next level. If you posted about Jesus as much as you did who you're voting for, the entire city would be turned upside down because I'm telling you, I'm not telling you not to have an opinion. I'm telling you, keep your opinion focused. I'm telling you, keep your opinion focused. Because there is coming a day where the kingdoms of this world will soon be the kingdoms of our God. And if we want revival, we don't get to hold on to our faith, trust, and idols in government. Someone say, Pastor Brian. That's not an idol. Are you serious? Within the same day, they compared the trial of Trump to the trial of Jesus. And nobody sees a problem with that. It infuriated me to the nature and the character of God. Are you kidding me? That's embarrassing. And it reveals where we put our trust. And I'm just telling you, I'm, I spent a lot of time here. I'm just trying to bring this home. 
I don't care who you vote for, what party you're a part of. As a kingdom ambassador, you do not get to, 2 Timothy chapter 2, says soldiers do not get entangled in civilian affairs. And if we look inside the body of Christ, I see way too many soldiers entangled in civilian affairs. I hope you have my back because they're coming for me, I imagine. <laughs> two, number one, number one, politics. Number two, arguments. Now, listen to me. I'll get out, I'll get off the politics so you can take a deep breath. Everyone take a deep breath for me. Release your idols, get delivered. Um, (laughs) Arguments. I'm telling you right now, the Bible says this. Pastor Brian, give me scripture. The Bible says this, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23 through 26. Basically, the gist of it is, don't get in foolish debates and pay no attention. I love the the mess. I, I love the translation that I read this morning. It said, "Don't get in foolish debates or stupid arguments." Yep. Hear me for a second. There cannot be a place in our hearts where we have to sacrifice the spirit of God for the truth of God. I have seen far too many people argue the truths of God outside of the Spirit of God and think they are rightfully just. When their character and their nature lack the Spirit of God, but they have the truth coming out of their mouth. When the Bible says, let your words be like grace on ears that hear it. It says not to be, the Bible says, not to fool, don't get into foolish debates. I'll never forget, I preached at Christ of the Nations, and I preached, and we, we, we preached, and I preached uh, clear the air, and we had people manifest, and, and we had breakthrough, and we had healing, and, and we had some deliverance, and, and uh, I, I talked to people afterwards, and I was talking to him, and, and I could see this guy in the back, and, and he was, you know, he's kind of pacing. He was just waiting on me, you know, you know those people? Just waiting on me like a dog, just walking, pacing. And as he finished, he started to walk towards me. And I was like, oh, he's got demons. I could feel the presence of evil as he approached me. And he said, hey, pastor, um, could we sit down and talk sometime? I was like, "Uh, yeah, absolutely, for sure. About what? He was like, about everything being done decently and in order. And I said, um. Are you a student here? He said, oh, no, I'm not a student here. I said, what, what are you doing here? He's like, well, I just pray and, and um, ask God where to send me to correct preachers. And he just happened to, he just happened to have me here today. And I said, um, I said, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. We're not fixing to have a conversation. He said, why? I said, we're not in a part of the same kingdom. And you want to debate and argue. I don't care to debate and argue. We can share revelation. But I don't care to debate and argue because Scripture says to run away from foolish arguments and stupid, stupid disagreements. And I look inside the body of Christ, and the world is going to hell in the handbasket, and we're arguing whether tongues should be over the mic or not. Right, right. Suicide rates are at an all-time high, and you look inside the church, and they want to know if you can have holes in your jeans or not, or if, if, if tattoos are biblical, or, or should the preacher wear earrings, or that we're looking inside the church while people are getting medicated. Gen Z is in sexual confusion, and they're having surgeries, changing their sexes, and they're arguing, and then they, and then they say that they can be whatever sex they want to be, and they can be him or her or they or she or them, and all of a sudden the church, when you look inside the church, we're arguing that the... The worship lights are too dark. The music's too loud. Are you kidding me? We're arguing about stupid things while the world is going to hell. I'm not asking you not to to love truth. I'm asking you to be passionate. 
about the gospel message of Jesus Christ and not just share political views or disagreements and arguments. I'm telling you that the church of the living God has to get passionate about sharing that there is a God who loves humanity and can save anybody, anywhere, anytime, no matter your ethnicity, your background, your pedigree, your past, no matter black, white, yellow, or Asian, the blood is still the blood. Quit arguing. Quit fighting. Quit caring about who's in government and love the world. Condemnation, hell, brimstone, fight. Listen, these people are playing with Ouija boards. Hell doesn't scare them. We got 11-year-old people learning how to be a witch, and you think hell scares them? Brother, you don't want to go to hell. No, brother, there is a God who is madly in love with humanity, and this love can change the trajectory of your life no matter where you are. I think the church needs to get enamored with sharing what matters. Well, Pastor, I think we should have small groups. I think we shouldn't have small groups. And I think we should have meet on Wednesday nights. And I think we should have a Bible study. And I think I think we should save our friends from eternal hell. That's what I think that we should do. I think that we should get enamored with the fact that people are dying and going to eternal damnation. I think we need to get enamored with the truth and the truth that sets people free. I think you need to shut up about who you're voting for and start shouting about who's coming back. Invite some friends next week. We're going to have some seats open. I can feel it in the room. Listen, give me your seat right now. You can, I can just eat, send me an email. At, I need your seat at gmail.com because I'm telling you there is a moment that is coming. The Bible says it like this. Mark those who cause division. And there cannot be room. I don't care what, I don't care what it's about. I don't care what it is. Hear me for just a second. Everyone talks about Absalom and how Absalom stole the kingdom from David. False. Absalom had some help. Because there was a friend of Absalom that believed that Absalom should be the king and not David. So what did that friend do? He stood at the gate and murmured about David. Oh, you know, if Absalom was king, could you believe that David did that? Mm. Well, I just think that we should probably. The old preacher said, don't take a picture of the preacher. Don't take a picture of the worship team. Take a picture of that sucker that causes division. Print it out and send it to all your leaders and let them know if this sucker calls you, if this, the old preacher said, if this booger shows up at your house, lock the door, call the police, mark those that cause division because in division comes destruction and it is destruction that Satan wants and it's division that he uses. And so if that is you and you are operating in the spirit of, the spirit of division, then fall to your knees, ask God to repent, ask God to forgive you and get on your face and ask God for character, ask God for integrity, ask God to shut your mouth, ask God to keep you quiet and there is a body of Christ that God is falling on believers where the brothers are unified and I don't care what preferences you have I don't care what denomination you come from Jesus isn't coming back for the Pentecostal church he's not coming back for the Catholic church he's not coming back for the non-denominational church he's not coming back for the Baptist church he's coming back for a church that is spotless wrinkleless blameless without any such thing and I want to be a part of that church that says I will destroy the gates of hell and they shall not prevail against me I want to be a part of the church don't scream make America great again scream make the church great again because if the church gets great again America will be great again stop arguing specifically 
specifically in this time and in this age, we cannot afford to burn bridges that in this next season we're going to need to reach the world for the gospel and the greater news that has ever hit the news channels. You won't find it on CNN. You won't find it on Fox News. You won't find it on NBC and CBN and all of it. You might not even find it on TBN. I'm telling you, there is a moment that you cannot allow the division to enter into your home, into your, into your relationships. There is a time where you have to come. I agree to disagree. Want to go to lunch? I agree to disagree. I've had moments where I sit down with people and I say, hey, let's just not talk about church. Because my relationships are above my agreement. And listen to me, friend. If you are disconnecting from people because there are some things in their lives you disagree with, might I ask you the question, how many things are in yours that Jesus doesn't? How many things are in your life, friend, that Jesus doesn't agree with? But every time you wake up, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. His mercy is new every morning and you share devotions and you got 75 people blocked. There's not even, a, there's not even enough blood to cover you because there's so much of it in your past. Don't get me wrong. There's enough blood. <laughs> it's an analogy. It's an analogy. Friend, I'm not telling you not to care about politics. I'm not telling you not to care about truth. I'm just telling you to get your priorities right. I'm just telling you in this season you can't afford. You can't afford to walk away from relationships because they're not voting for the person you're voting for. You can't walk away. You can't cut them off. How are you supposed to show them Christ? How are you supposed to show them love? That's not a, that's not a covenant, friend. That's a contract. As soon as you cross my line of agreements, we're done. That means that we don't understand covenant. I'm not telling you to let what people walk all over you, but I am telling you, you can't afford... To be distracted with politics over kingdom and truth over grace. There is, he is coming full of grace and truth. They have to be married. Truth with no grace is abuse. Grace with no truth is tolerance. But when you put grace and truth together, you have Jesus who is filled with grace and truth. And I, I want, I want, if I could be so bold as to encourage you, you said, Pastor Brian, we're not even there yet. I want to get ahead of it. Come on, Brian. Come on. I want to get ahead of it. Good. I, I, Pastor, we're, we're months away from, you know, the, the madness. <laughs> but I want, I want to let you know now, the Spirit of God is, 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 it's gripped me with this reality, friend, that when you look inside the body of Christ, there cannot be division over things that matter but don't. Right. Come on. Hear me. Because, listen, I, I told the first service, I'll be in the lobby to shake any hand that disagrees with me. It's fine. I'll shake your hand. Let you know. Love you. But I'm telling you right now, we can't afford to have division over areas that shouldn't be division in the body of Christ. Amen. Let me break this down. If they believe that Jesus isn't God, divide. If they believe Jesus is God, but they don't know whether tongues are for today, don't divide. Don't make secondary issues primary ones. We do have to agree to walk together, but we don't have to agree all the way across the board theologically to have relationship. Thank God. I am telling you, 
There's no room in the body of Christ for you to hate your brother because he's voting for someone you disagree with. There is no room. There is no room in your heart to argue truths that don't matter, but they matter. I've had conversations, and they've gone. Dre, you can come. I'm, I'm closing right now. I've had conversations that were calm, like calm, and the moment that I realized that our relationship was at stake, I said, hey, you know what? I think we're just going to agree to disagree. One day we're going to find out. And the truth is, by the time we get on the other side, we won't even be thinking about what we're disagreeing over. And can I just say, when you look inside the body of Christ, it truly is embarrassing to see some of the things we allow come in between you and I. In light of the cross, we just got out of two weeks of dealing with the fence. In light of the cross, what we allow in between us is slightly embarrassing. There has to be a moment where Jesus helps us disagree. If you can't control your mouth, delete the app. I've seen people post on my stuff. I'm like, your Facebook won't let you keep scrolling? Like, where is it on the app that you can't scroll past what you disagree with? Because my Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes with self-control. Amen. How come most of our Holy Ghosts are lacking it? You can't control your tongue, speaking in tongues, and can't control your life. How is it that we have the Spirit of God? Just keep scrolling. Somebody says something dumb. Oop. Oop. He said, well, pastor, someone needs to tell them the truth. (laughs) It ain't you. (laughs) You're not that guy, friend. (laughs) That's what I should have called it. You're not that guy. You're not that guy, friend. Because if you're correcting people outside of the realm of relationship, you're out of line. There's a moment where the Bible even says like this, I'll give you scripture just to make it legal. Psalms 37 says, do not be provoked by evildoers. Not only that, the Bible says, do not provoke. Well, you know, I just like to stir the pot. You mean you like to be rebellious. You mean you mean your life is so boring, you got to create drama. I wish I was that bored. Switch lives with me for a day. I'll be that bored. I'll delete Facebook, delete Instagram, and play golf. 36 holes, maybe 42. I don't know. Find a hobby. (laughs) Scripture. Don't be provoked by evildoers. This is... 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7 says, Don't fight over useless words. Right. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1 says, A soft word turns away wrath. A harsh word stirs up anger. And I just want to I just want to pay, I'll draw attention back to our main text. Jesus says in this text, if my kingdom were of this world. My followers would be fighting. Let him who has ears hear. Jesus says, if my kingdom was of this world, my followers would be found fighting. When we look inside the church, are we found fighting 
Because if we are, it is a revealer to us. We believe the kingdom is in this world. We have to have a revelation that I am in this world, from another world, not of this world, headed to another world. And I don't want my life to pay tribute to the government. I want my life to pay tribute to who is going to the greater place after this world because of me. If you want to scream, fight, and holler Trump 2024, Biden 2024, you do so. But get out of the way and make room for people who want to be loud about where God is loud and silent about where God is silent. I think it's time that we're loud about things that matter. And as the sweat drips down my back, stand up. Can I pray for you? If you feel comfortable, would you lift hands? Father, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him. Father, I thank you that you would allow us and grace us with the spirit of self-control and eyes to see a kingdom beyond this world. God, release kingdom mindsets in the mind of Christ. Father, give us the spirit of self-control. Give us the spirit of grace. Let us let us have a revelation that the world is going to hell in a handbasket and no government official or political party can save it. Give me the emphasis to set my face like flint on things that matter. Close my mouth on things that don't and open my mouth on things that matter. Let me be a vessel to be used in the hands of the almighty God. Let it be so that give me simple phrases that unlock big doors. God, fill me with the spirit. Set me on fire. Turn me ablaze. Remove my selfish ambitions and my own desires. Throw my plans out the window and establish my king, establish your king kingdom on the earth today through me I repent for the malice in my heart I repent for the division in my mouth I repent for the things that I have done to cause division in the kingdom of God God release a unity amongst the brethren that demands a blessing touch our lives Holy Spirit cleanse us Redeem us, restore us, deliver us. God, make the church great again. God, release men and women of character and integrity. Develop the greater on the inside of us. Set us on fire. Turn us ablaze. Let there be praying fathers again. Let there be praying husbands again. Let there be praying families again. Let us be consistent in the house of God. Consistent in the assembly of the brethren. Consistent in our devotion. Consistent in our temperance. Help us be slow to anger. Help us be slow to speak and eager to listen. Release the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus. God, I thank you for maximizing and expediting spiritual gifts and spiritual fruit. Release the fruit of the Spirit. Release the gifts of the Spirit. We call to the surface patience, kindness, gentleness, fruitfulness, faithfulness, self-control, love, joy, peace, patience. God, do something in the body of Christ. We don't scream today, make America great again. My scream is to make the church great again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you. See you next week.